Hey man, why are you so sweaty? I was watching gear tasting. That's a lie, because I know gear tasting doesn't come on till Thursday. Okay, I was playing your drum set. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. Today I wanted to start out talking about some new holsters from a company called Q-Series. So this is their stealth holster and single stack magazine carrier. And what I like about these so far from what I've been able to ascertain, just taking them out of the box from right now, um, is that they do a really good job with everything they're marketed to do. And I know that sounds a little weird, product's supposed to do that, but um, lots of products say they do stuff and when you really get them out of the box, sometimes they don't. So what I really like about this is that the, the clip that in that, and I mean clip, not a magazine, <laughs> that uh, actually goes around your belt, does what it's designed to do, which is not only uh, hold the holster on a belt, but also allow you to run this holster without a belt. So that's kind of an interesting dilemma sometimes with holsters is that you're almost required at all times to wear a belt, especially with some that don't even have a clip on them that you can kind of remove like that. So with this, if you can look real quick at the, the actual um, clip right here. It's metal and it's very aggressive when you're putting it onto a belt. So when you're kind of clipping this around a belt, it's, it's kind of, it takes a little bit of work, but the trade-off is that you, uh, you also have something that doesn't leave a gap and that bites into clothing really well. So, you know, if you look at the seam of your shorts, you know, most shorts or even, you know, pants have some type of seam around the, the edge there by the the belt loops and what that does is this clip actually bites into the belt loop so not only does it bite into your belt to allow you to pull the the gun out of the holster but it'll bite into clothing too allowing you to still draw and, and i have confirmed that works even on just this pair of shorts that i'm wearing so i think that's a pretty interesting design um, and i'm sure other holsters on the market do that uh, i'm you know i can't say for sure that they do or don't i'm, I'm not positive on that but um, I really love the nature of the, the spring metal clip that's on here. So um, that, also, that same clip design is also on their single stack magazine carrier too. And everything that they make is injection molded. Um, so the premise behind the stealth holster is that it clips onto the trigger guard. So not only is it clip onto the trigger guard, but it runs a, a pretty fair length down the, down the, uh, the lower too of the pistol. So. Um, it does draw very easily, you know, both this, you know, out this way as well as down this way. So if you did have it, it comes with a little piece of paracord so you can take or remove the, the actual clip and then tie in this piece of paracord to the holster and then have it tied to a bag or something like that too. So you can still carry it safely in a bag and then just draw it in the, and that'll come off. So I, I definitely don't think this is a, a holster for reholstering per se. Um, I'm, I'm pretty nervous about reholstering with any holster that I'm, that I'm carrying appendix with. So, um, and that's how I carry uh, the Glock 43. So this holster was built for the 42 and the 43. Um, so that's the, the stealth holster. Again, injection molded, not Kydex, um, as well as the single stack magazine carrier. It's also injection molded, but it's got a, a small little Phillips head adjustment screw on the side here. So you can, you can vary the actual uh, tension that the, you know, the, the mag, uh, the mag stack, the single stack magazine carrier is providing uh, for the magazine, the retention level, so to speak. So, and again, everything is ambidextrous, so you can flip this clip to the, the opposite side, as well as on the stealth holster, you can flip it to the opposite side too. So, that is the single stack magazine carrier and stealth holster from Q-Series. So, we appreciate them letting us kind of take a look at these products and showcase them to you here on Gear Tasting. Again, this is just an initial look. This is just right out of the box. These are my initial thoughts on Q-Series. Hey guys, next up I wanted to showcase a brand new product for us. We are calling the ITS Gizmo Bag. So we have been in development with this for quite a while now. We've been trying to get the size and dimension perfect. Um, the stitching is, is bomb proof. It's all made in the USA. It's made out of 1000D coated Cordura, so you kind of get some inherent water resistance for whatever you decide to keep in these bags. But these measure 5 by 13 by 7, so 7 inches tall, 
5 inches wide and 13 inches long. So when we decided to do that, we wanted to build it for a couple of different purposes. One, um, I use bags like this to store mags in a lot and I'm always frustrated because I open up these bags and my mags are just pretty much everywhere. Um, it's hard to know exactly what I've got in it. So the dimension actually locks mags of different sizes in here in a certain way that, that really kind of helps organize them. And I'll show you that in a second. But it's also great for storing like a chest rig. It's great for some medical supplies. And it does a really good job fitting some of our zip bags too, all of which I'll get into. So first off, the you know the size is very convenient. It's got two carry handles and everything's made out of um, really good webbing. Nothing is going to fall apart. It's got paracord uh, zips on the top. Um, and this specific bag here is set up to carry PMAG. So as you can see, I've got 24 PMAGs. Well, I say 24. I've got a mix of 12 PMAGs, maybe 14-ish PMAGs, and some other mags, just so you can see the difference. So some of these are hex mags, regular USGI mags, um, HK mags, there's, there's quite a different, there's quite a few different variations here and some of them have Ranger plates on the bottom if you're familiar with those. So this, by just kind of opening it up like this, your mags kind of fillet open and you know if you have 24 mags in this bag, it makes for a very organized way to store your mags and carry them to and from the range. So that's something that I really wanted to make sure that the bag was capable of but ubiquitous enough to do other things too. So that's not exactly the primary design behind this is just as a, a spare magazine bag. Um, there's lots more that this bag can do. So if you jump over to larger mag sizes like the uh, AK mags, it can still fit between 12 and 24 AK mags depending on what kind of mags you're running. As you'll know, if you run AK mags that there's a lot of different size AK mags on the market you know, whether it's, you know, the old 545 plum mags, whether it's the 762 magazines, um, you can see that they lock in here really well and nice and you can, uh, you can store quite a few of them in here. So again, this is three, six, nine, this is 12 mags of varying sizes right here. So you've got some US Palm 762 mags, you've got some plum 545s and then just your standard 762 uh, 30 round mags too. So. It can fit quite a few different uh, types of mags in variations, um, depending on how you store them. Um, it's very easy to get to them as well. So that is kind of the, the mag design for the bags themselves. Now, you can also um, fit a helmet sideways in one of these bags too. Just as a reference, um, it will fit something like a bump helmet in there too. But so to move on here, this is our configuration for zip bags. So when you open this up, our zip bags, you can hold between four and six of our zip bags in the top. And again, one of the reasons that we designed the zip bag the way we did it, just our normal uh, standard size zip bag, is that it, it has a convenient pull handle on either side. So no matter what configuration you load it into this bag, uh, you're always going to be able to pull these and dock them in and out. So you could you could have organization in this bag by simply having a few zip bags stationed in here. And you can fit probably between four and six of these in here. Now, we do make other zip bag sizes like the, the skinny and the mini uh, size zip bags, and you can fit quite a few of those too. So we purposely didn't offer any interior organization in this bag uh, because of the fact that we have bags and options for internal organization inside bags already, and we wanted to kind of take advantage of um, making a bag that's uh, less expensive to the end user like you at home, uh, but also fit a lot of what we already have existing so that you can use our existing product line within this bag too. So you can also set this thing up for medical supplies. Um, so I, I took off the regular paracord that was on here, put on some red paracord kind of as a medical de designation, but um, you can see I've got this pretty loaded down with medical supplies in here and it's got you know everything from tourniquets to quick clot to um, SAM splints in here and bandages and it kind of fits or it does fit quite a bit of stuff in here so if you wanted to use this as a standalone medical bag like a vehicle medical bag it's perfect for that and it's a good size for it um, and then the, you can also fit a chest rig so this is a, a Haley strategic flat pack and D5 chest rig all kind of stored together inside of one of these bags and it fits perfectly inside of here so if you wanted to you know, store a chest rig, and you can also store it with mags too. It will fit that as well. But 
Um, if you wanted to, to load that out and have that ready to go in a vehicle, you could do that as well too. Um, the premise also behind the size of these bags is that they stack really evenly and really nicely. So when you fill them out, um, they'll stack really nicely side by side. It's easy to grab. Uh, they're very easy to grab, so they make a storage in a vehicle or something like that really nicely too. These will fit behind a seat really nice in that space there, um, but there's just so many uses for these bags, it's really hard to, to narrow it and isolate it down to one particular way to use these bags. It's, it's totally up to you as the end user, and we wanted to create that in a bag. So again, ITS Gizmo Bags, available on store.itstactical.com. Welcome to Questions Over Coffee. I'm going to field a question today from Matt V. He asked on Facebook, thought you guys did a video a while back on how to camouflage paint something and now I can't find it. Any guidance? So I know we've talked about painting a gun before, but we've never really gone into detail. And I know I've talked about the reasons that I've painted ARs. And honestly, I haven't really been doing a whole lot of it lately. Um, Something that I've done is I was trying to color match mass gray with a spray paint color a long time ago and I'd done some accessories like a pistol grip and um, rail panels and things like that in that color to just kind of see what that looked like before I went and rattle canned everything uh, with that specific color. And it, does, it is pretty good match for mass gray, but um, I'll try to link to that episode so you can kind of check that out as well if you're interested in the spray paint that matches that. But this is a gun that I've fully painted. I've had this for a very long time. This is uh, from POF. This is a piston driven AR. And I've probably had this thing for, God, since, I don't know, 2002-ish, something like that. So it's, it's been quite a while and I've shot a, a lot of rounds through it. Um, but the, the camouflage has kind of been uh, hit or miss with me in terms of like d durability and dependability. Really, the main premise for painting a gun is to break up the outline. So you've got a you know, black rifle and you've got all this camouflage on, you need to do something uh, to, to mask the, um, I guess, the, the contrast between your black rifle and your camouflage. That's the real, that's the main goal of that. So whether that's something that's as that's less durable like a, a Krylon or a spray paint or whether it's more durable like a Cerakote, um, you're still, your premise there is still kind of the, the camouflage or breakup aspect of that. So is, is spray paint durable? No, it's really not that durable. You can see that, you know, every time, you know, fire the gun, uh, the round that gets ejected off this would, you know, chip the paint and things like that. And I have tried to touch it up over the years in certain places, but uh, the way that I did this is I actually just kind of masked off some some parts that I felt were integral to, to do whenever I spray painted it. Like um, I had a, a charging handle that was spray painted at one time, so I didn't actually remove that or I didn't even remove the, the bolt carrier group. I probably will, would have nowadays, but you know, I was, you know, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing back in 2002 spray painting guns. It wasn't any real big instruction. You're just like the, well, I blame Steven for my painted rifle thread on light fighter if you've ever read that. So I blame Steven too, cause that's probably where I, figured out how to, to do this as well. But um, that was way back in the day, which is a Wednesday, by the way. And uh, someone gave me shit last time for quoting Dane Cook. So anyway, um, I don't know why that popped in my head. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, you know, I covered things up like the, the forward assist and things like that. And, you know, I had the, the, um, the door closed on that and all that good stuff. But um, there wasn't much that I actually covered up. So I don't know if you can tell, but this kind of is the, the a multicam stencil. So what I did is I actually traced a piece of the multicam pattern uh, back in the day, cut it out on some cardboard, and then kind of taped the edges of that cardboard with some uh, packing paper or something like that so the overspray didn't get anywhere. And then I just kind of put the stencil on there. I think I put a base coat first of tan. So a base coat is probably a good plan if you're going to paint a rifle, you know, do everything in one base coat color and then come in with the highlights for the the pattern if you're going to do a camouflage pattern, whether that's draping some netting over it and spraying through it so it kind of gets that, 
that hashed pattern from, a, from that, or whether you do something like this with a multicam uh, stencil. Um, that's kind of what I did with this stuff. So there's, there's different ways to do it. And I had two stencils and two different colors of, of paint to do that in. So um, I had kind of a, a dark base tan on the whole gun, and then I came back with a brown and a lighter tan uh, with two different types of multicam stencils. So I had two different stencils based on the color. So, you know, I came through, put the stencil in various places, and there really wasn't any rhyme or reason to it. I was just trying to kind of break it up, you know. I'm, I'm pretty anal retentive when it comes to certain things, but when I painted this gun, it really wasn't a, a big deal for me. I was just trying to put some paint on it. And then I came back in and remarked things like the witness marks. I used to have a, a red dot sight and it was mounted more forward, but uh, when I tried to mess with the ACOG on this gun, I mounted it more, more back. Um, so it just really depends. This is a super heavy gun too, by the way. Like it, I think it was 12 pounds or something holding it. But anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of the impetus for spray painting or rattle canning a gun. Thanks for watching Gear Tasting. Remember, if you have any questions, use the pound tag Gear Tasting in the social media network and we'll get them answered here on Gear Tasting. And as always, thanks for your support with the show. If you like what we're doing here, please consider signing up for our Patreon channel, patreon.com slash ITS Tactical. Thanks for watching.